Any brand in any category can be a legend, so long as you build the right story from the ground up and nurture that story with constant reinforcement. Yes, it does take a good deal of luck and even a greater deal of restraint to stay the course, especially if you're a marketer tasked with short-term growth. But brand strategy is, as I have said so many times in my videos, a long-term game. Now, legends aren't just subject of good stories, they are the story themselves. This is 5 Minute Friday, so join me as I give you my top legends in marketing and how you can become one too. What's up everybody, Arndt Eriksson here with yet another 5 Minute Friday. Here's what I need you to do. Number one, subscribe. Number two, give it a thumbs up or smash it if you so desire. Number three, leave a comment down below or hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. It's at Arndt Eriksson everywhere. Okay, let's just jump into it. Marketing legends aren't born with amazing strategies. They are influenced, molded and formed through their entire lifetime. Just think about the following. A local newspaper fired Walt Disney for not being creative enough. Advertising legend David Ogilvy started his career selling stoves prior to becoming the father of advertising. Steve Jobs dropped out of college and then drifted for quite some time before co-founding Apple Computer in the family garage. Marketers can draw on the failures and successes of those who forged away before them, applying those lessons to their brand, meaning a brand legend is a narrative that makes people see their own lives differently. But what is a legend? Urban Dictionary has the following simple description. Legend, someone to look up to, a leader of their field and respected by their peers. Dictionary.com defines it like this, an extremely famous or notorious person, especially in a particular field. Then you have the definition of what it isn't. A brand legend is not heritage, it's not history, it's not fiction, and it's not a good story you tell others or yourself. It's important to note that legends come from action. That means that any brand, young or old, can lay the foundation for a legend that is strategically built upon over time. Heritage, history, content, all of those things can reinforce a legend, but they do not create one. Let me explain. Legends have two kinds of events that thread through their brand narrative over time. The inflection point and spark moments. The inflection point is the original story where something happened and nothing was ever the same again. It basically says, something happened here and it changed the world. Spark moments are definitive moments which follow the inflection point and cement the brand and its reputation. These are moments where brand overcome challenges, pivot direction, expands to new territories, both literally and metaphorically, and so on. So, how to measure if you and your brand is legendary? Seth Godin offers a really simple and effective way to measure how bonded people are to your brand. Will they miss us if we're gone? Brand legends come from action. It's your choices that will make you legendary. It is the big moves that people remember. It's just that simple. So here are my top legends of marketing. David Ogilvy. He is often credited as the father of advertising due to his iconic marketing campaigns. He famously said, never stop testing and your advertising will never stop improving. Ogilvy's advertising philosophy followed these four basic principles. Creative brilliance had a strong emphasis on the big idea. Research coming as he did from a background in research, he never underestimated its importance in advertising. In fact, in 1952, he opened his own agency. He built himself as research director. Actual results for clients. In the modern world of business, it is useless to be a creative, original thinker unless you can also sell what you create. Professional discipline. I prefer the discipline of knowledge to the anarchy of ignorance. David Ogilvy's first win was packaging out the grand opening of a hotel on a $500 budget with a direct postcard campaign. Not only was he indirectly creative mind, he was also one of the first analytical marketers and a pioneer in split A-B testing. He would run two versions of one ad the same time, both keyed with a unique way for consumers to respond so the winning ad could be identified, then rolled out nationally. He believed that tests were the key to improvement. Ogilvy strongly believed that the function of advertising is to sell and that successful advertising for any product is based on the information about its consumer. 
He disliked advertisement that had loud patronizing voices and believed a customer should be treated as intelligent. In 1955, he coined the phrase, the customer is not a moron, she's your wife. Mary Kay Ash. Mary Kay Ash has been credited for bringing network marketing and multi-level marketing from the fringe into the mainstream with the launch of her world-famous cosmetic firm in 1963. The first marketing principle she embraced was know your audience as one of the first to tap an underutilized workforce. The housewife who were sick of being at home mom but didn't want a traditional 9 to 5 job. She incentivized this workforce to spread the word of her business by awarding top sellers with lavendish gifts such as pink Cadillacs, transforming them into mobile advertisements for the company. Mary Kay Ash quit her job as a salesperson in Dallas when the man she trained was promoted above her for twice the pay. She became a pioneer of multi-level marketing so women could have just as much success as men. Her marketing innovations included giving expensive gifts, offering incentives for recruiting others, and emphasis on direct sale through friends and family. According to Direct Selling News, Mary Kay was the sixth largest network marketing company in the world in 2015, with a wholesale volume of 3.7 billion US dollars. Seth Godin. Seth Godin is an author, entrepreneur, and most of all, a teacher. One of the most endearing qualities of Seth Godin as a marketer is his true honesty and authenticity. In addition to launching one of the most popular blogs in the world, he has written 18 best-selling books, including The Dip, Lynchpin, Purple Cow, Tribes, and What to Do When It's Your Turn. In his books and on his blog, he shares his advice on how to build an audience and focus on creating value. He has taught us that people are attracted to the remarkable, and to be remarkable, you have to be the uniquely best. In order to appeal to the market, you gotta stand out to the market. You do that by being the best, being different, being unique, being cutting edge, being retro, being anything that is not what the crowd is. In other words, being the purple cow in a field of black and white jersey cattle. It's not just enough to get someone's attention. You can run down Main Street to get attention. Godin is remarkable enough to get and keep people's attention. By focusing on everything from effective marketing and leadership to the spread of ideas and changing everything. Seth has been able to motivate and inspire countless people around the world. In 2013, Seth was one of just three professionals included in the Direct Marketing Hall of Fame. In an astonishing turn of events, in May of 2018, he was included into the Marketing Hall of Fame as well. He might be the only person in both. Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder was one of nine children born to Eastern Europe immigrants in Queens, New York. She rose to become the head of her own international cosmetic conglomerate, including brands such as Estee Lauder, MAC Cosmetics and Clinique. Lauder was the only woman selected for Time Magazine's 1998 list of the 20 most influential business genius of the 20th century. And at the time, she was the richest self-made woman in the world. At the core of her success were her marketing tactics. She avidly deployed early influencer marketing strategies, understanding the power of putting products into the hands of those who would authentically share the brand message. Lauder provided free products to friends, family and acquaintances so that they could spread the world effectively and enthusiastically. Key takeaways from Estee Lauder is expand your reach by tapping into the audience of those people who influence your target marketing. Create relationships, partnerships and campaign that are mutually beneficial and drive results. Gary Vaynerchuk Gary Vaynerchuk is a genius marketer because he doesn't ignore trends. Instead, he analyzes which are most likely to be successful and becomes a leader in all of them. This is most true for various social media tools, most notably Snapchat. He doesn't only talk about these tools, he uses them like crazy too. He's a prolific video marketer with focus on educating his audience on how to make the most of these trends and tools and answering questions. How did he get to be such an expert? After graduating college in 1998, he assumed day-to-day -day control of his father's liquor store, then called Shoppers Discount Liquors. He changed the name to the Wine Library, and through a combination of e-commerce, email marketing and aggressive pricing, Vaynerchuk grew the business from $3 million to $50 million a year by 2005. He is a great marketer because he's not afraid to test new tactics to identify the strengths and weaknesses then find the most unique way to leverage the strength. He defines himself as a practitioner and an attention day trader. 
At the core, he is humble, filled with gratitude, and has the patience needed to achieve his ultimate goal, to buy the New York Jets. And that, combined with all of his accomplishments, will definitely make him a legend. What will you do the day you buy the Jets? Cry. <laughs> I will cry. I will cry for a lot of different reasons, but I will cry. I yeah. will absolutely cry. It will be, you know, we're talking about, at the time that I do it, 55, 60, 65 years of me talking to myself about a, a novel mission to accomplish something like that, yeah. it's emotional. Well, that's the end of this 5 Minute Friday session. I'm sure you might have strong opinions about the list, so please share your list of top marketers. I know I also should and could mention Steve Jobs, Ariane Huffington, Leo Burnett, Bill Burnback, and many more, but I made a tough choice and gave you these legends of mine. Anyways, thank you for giving me your time and attention. I do hope I managed to inform, enlighten, and entertain you. If you like this video, please consider giving it a good thumbs up and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. It actually makes a difference. Next Friday, I'll share with you my list of top CEOs of the world. Until then, be safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you next Friday. Shoo.